What's up guys? It is John Muscarella from Side Hustle Experiment. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm a six-figure Amazon and eBay seller. We sell mainly used books and media, and we also do online arbitrage on Amazon, which will be more of a focus for us in 2022. On this channel, we talk everything about how you can make money selling on eBay and also Amazon, uh, mostly Amazon. If you are into that, please subscribe to the channel. It would really mean a lot to me. And if you could like the video, that'd be awesome. On today's video, I'm gonna do a kind of a recap of 2021 and the biggest lessons I've learned, how I'm gonna roll those into 2022 and hopefully how you could learn from them so you kind of don't have to make these mistakes um, or kind of, you know, maybe it'll give you some perspective as you're growing your business. This was a big year of growth for us. Um, so let's just get into it. So for me, I got a warehouse at the beginning of the year. Um, it was meant to be for uh, books. Uh, I was My vision was that I was going to get this warehouse. It was going to scale up really quick. We're going to start doing truckloads of books, for which for those who don't know, that's about anywhere from 44 to 50 Gaylords of books uh, in a truck. And you do that because it's better pricing. It's easier to almost like you get like definitely a lot better pricing for that, but it also has obstacles. And I got in here and within two to three months being here, restock limits hit. I don't really panic because like my limits are still high enough and then they just keep getting cut and cut and cut and cut. And I was just like, oof, like this is rough. And then that brings us to the first lesson. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna save the best for last and just kind of go uh, reverse order. So first biggest lesson is pivot. You gotta learn how to pivot. You always gotta be ready to pivot. So like I was saying, like I thought my business would look much different than it does. Um, but when the restock limits hit, we, all, we just really paid more attention to eBay and merchant fulfilled books. Merchant fulfilling books means that I store the books and also ship the books to the customer when they buy them on Amazon. Um, I've, I have merchant fulfilled a little before, but not at this scale and not at this volume. So it was quite the learning uh, curve for me. We got new software. We had to come up with a way to store them, organize them, get them shipped out, um, you know, figure out a shipping template, all this stuff. Um, had to be figured out in order to do so. And we also did more eBay as a result of that. I really wanted more of a uh, FBA business and eBay would kind of just be like extra money. Uh, eBay be ended up becoming a big part of the business this year. Um, but that is lesson number one. Like you just really got to be willing to pivot whether or not like you want to or not. Like I just wanted to do books, but how I was doing it wasn't going to work, so I had to make a change. Two, networking. So networking was, even with everything going on, I was able to go to an event uh, this year, and the people I met at that event just basically really changed my mind uh, about like doing, exploring other models on Amazon, mainly online arbitrage. And the connections I made there, and also connections I made on Instagram, if you want to follow me, at Side Hustle Experiment, um, have just been game-changing for me, especially getting into OA and not knowing much about online arbitrage. Um, being able to pick up this phone and texting someone, hey, uh, would you buy this? Or, hey, I kind of stuck. Like, this Amazon saying this, I don't think that's true. And then be like, oh, don't worry about that. Like, just tell them this. Or don't worry about that. It happens. Just move on. Um, knowing that stuff, instead of wasting time Googling it or watching YouTube videos, let me take that back. Not wasting time. Like, that's how you learn. But being able to just reach out to someone who's been through it before and get advice on what they did, much, much quicker. Um, and it, it's just great. Like, it's been so beneficial for me. So definitely be networking with people on Instagram. I pretty much met all these people that I met in real life at the event on Instagram prior, and then met other people and we've been connecting on Instagram and uh, through text and stuff like that. 
Number three, this one is kind of not related to business, but it really is. And it was not focusing on health and eating healthy. I know we all like say it, it's kind of cliche, uh, but there was a time where I was like working out for a period of like a month or two. I definitely felt much better. But then when I added online arbitrage to the business and it just, there's no time at like, there's always time, but I didn't make it a priority. Let's just say that. It wasn't a priority for me. It was getting online arbitrage up and running, keeping the book business running, keeping eBay running. And it really played a toll on me mentally, um, like just tired, like stressed out, uh, you know, so that I like decided to like eat like shitty food and stuff like that. Um, so this year I'm really gonna be focusing on health. I'm gonna put that ahead because to be honest, like, what is the point of doing all this, building a big business, making lots of profit, if you're going to be, like, too sick or to spend the money or enjoy the money? Doesn't make much sense. <clears throat> and plus, anything, anytime I've been in really good shape, um, things have always just worked out much easily. Like, there weren't that many problems. There weren't these little hiccups or it just, things just seem to work better. So, especially this year, this is going to be a really important year for the business because we're going to be making a big move, um, kind of. We'll get into that a little later. Um, but definitely going to be focusing on exercising, eating healthy, and just making that a priority to make everything else in life easier. Number four, this is kind of a weird one, but... I think not a lot of us do this, but it's celebrating. Celebrating wins um, or even possibly celebrating like figuring out why you lost and like not and how to not do that again. For me, it just has become like, oh, if I don't do better in sales than the last month, this month sucked. Um, and that's not a good way to look at things. Um, Things just happen. Amazon is seasonal. There are some things where, you know, for books, like January is good. Uh, May is good. All the textbook seasons are good. September a little bit. August, September. Um, so those are where the big spikes come. Um, for OA, obviously, for OA stuff, RI, like Q4 is great. And that's not to say that, like, it's impossible to do better than you did last month, especially when you start. It's really easy when you when you first get started to be like doubling every month, but you'll get to a point where it's like, it gets really hard to double uh, what you did last month. Um, and that could also be just, you know, you're expecting to do like double, but like your product gets delayed or Amazon loses it or it gets stranded or whatever, but it's just, you just gotta, you know, realize that it's almost like a game. I almost feel like I became numb to like sales and numbers. Like this was a great year and it almost doesn't feel like a great year because I, in my head, like this didn't go as I wanted to go. But when I look at numbers and what happened, you know, I got a warehouse, I found a helper. Uh, the business almost doubled from last year. We did 50 over 55 K on eBay. Um, you know, we got all the equipment we needed, built relationships with people, started this YouTube channel, which I really love doing. I want to do more of next year. Um, just so many great stuff. And it's really not until I talk to other people who are like, Oh my God, I can't believe you did that. I'm like, what do you mean? Like, I just do it. And they're like, no, like, I have no idea how to do that. So it's really hard, right? When we're all looking at each other's stuff and it's like, everyone's always doing better, but it's not to talk to other people or, and you have to have your own standards. It doesn't really matter what other people think, but I think you get the point. So just kind of be like, if you do something good, be like, shit, that was awesome. Like, let's get a nice dinner at night or do whatever you want to do. Don't celebrate too long, but acknowledge it and be like, all right, like, let's do more of this. Let's continue this. Number five, this is the biggest one um, and the most one that caused probably the most issues this year. 
And it is focusing on too many things. I basically look at my business as three businesses. Um, I do eBay, I do Amazon FBA for books and media and Amazon FBA for, or Amazon Merch Fulfilled for books and media as well. Some people might even break it down even further and say like books and media would be separate, but I just kind of put them together. Um, and I look at them as three different businesses because they all require different softwares, uh, processes, everything is different. Each platform has its uh, different intricacies. You know, eBay, you got to take pictures of everything. You got to store everything. You got to organize it. You have to answer customer service emails. You have to, you know, check the listings, refresh the listings, schedule. Like, there's a lot of stuff you have to do there. Amazon FBA, you got to list all the books. You got to get them there. You got to, you know, you don't have to deal with customer service, but like you have to make sure your account metrics are good and all this other stuff. And then Merchant Fulfilled Books, you're storing everything, organizing everything. Like everything is different. And I've been listening to someone called Alex uh, Hermozzi, H-O-R-M-O-Z-I, I'm pretty sure. Um, he runs this thing called Gym Launch. He built like a lot of gyms. He made a ton of money. And one thing he sees people, the, big, the most thing they struggle with the most is their attention, not giving attention enough to one just one thing. Um, and it's hard, how, how do you really get good at three things, make three really great businesses and all at the same time, like you don't. <laughs> and that's kind of what I learned the hard way. I like disguised it as, oh, I'm diversifying, I'm doing, you know, different things, I'm working with an Amazon. And, you know, what I'm really doing is just really kind of diluting how big I can make one of them. I guess it was really four because online arbitrage is the fourth thing that I've been doing. So this year it's really gonna be focused on online arbitrage, books and eBay are gonna take a back seat. I already have a plan in place to kind of phase out of them. I'm not just gonna drop them, but I know exactly how I'm gonna kind of work through that. Um, and online arbitrage is gonna be pretty much the sole focus. That and pretty much probably this YouTube channel. Obviously that's two separate things, but I, I almost kind of view the YouTube as like a hobby, like something I enjoy doing. So not really um, like work or another business or whatnot. Um, but yeah, focus and attention definitely all over this year. And when I look at some of the biggest Amazon sellers or even businesses, what are they doing? They're doing one thing. They're doing... Or they're doing one thing extremely well, they scaled it really big, and now all of a sudden like they're, they have a problem that they have to solve in their business and they make software. And if they think it could help other people, then like they make a business out of that, which is totally different. But the people I know doing that have different people running that business. Like it's almost a separate entity and different things. So for me, it's gonna be focused this year, like focusing on health, focusing on one, business model, focusing on getting rid of the other business models. So that is kind of 2021 for me in a nutshell and a recap of the five things I've learned the most. So let's just go real quick. One, you gotta be able to pivot. Two, network, super important. Three, focus on your health, feeling good, eating good stuff. Four, remember to celebrate your wins, don't just you know, gloss over them because it's important because, you know, they do come often, but sometimes there are more losses than wins and it's important to focus, you know, that you are winning and it's not just you're losing all the time. Five, focus on one business model, one thing, grow that really big, get all systems in place so you can basically step away and then kind of focus on something else, uh, which will take time. I realize that, um, so there you go, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments. What was the most, what do you think the best lesson was? What did you learn this year? What are you looking forward to next year? I would love to know. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. This will be the last video of the year. Um, next year, I got a lot of cool things planned for this channel and doing more and giving you guys more value. So excited for that. So have a great New Year's and I will see you next year, guys.